Hi, it's Dennis the Gardening Noob. I was bored this winter, so I decided to try and grow radishes from seeds, indoors under the grow lights. I had never done it before, so I had no idea what to expect. Turns out I did just fine. The bulbs weren't exactly prize winners in terms of size or looks. In fact, some of them looked deformed, but they all tasted good, especially paired with lettuce that I also grew inside. If you're interested in trying this yourself, or just want to know how I did it, then stick around and I'll show you all the details. Okay, so the first thing I did was choose the growing containers. My initial plan was to go with this 28 cell seed starting tray. Each cell is about 6.5 cm tall and 5.5 cm wide at the top. But since I had lots of sprouted seed left from the paper towel seed starting method, I will tell you more about that in a moment. I also added a few larger standalone pots which are 7.8 cm tall with tops approximately 10 cm wide. I thought it would be interesting to see if there would be any difference in the size of the plants or the bulbs between these two different types of containers. I then filled both the cells and the pots with soil. I used a mix of potting soil and earthworm castings in a 1 to 1 ratio. The earthworm castings acted as fertilizer and the main reason why I was so generous with it is because I wanted to make sure that the radishes had plenty of nutrients to produce the bulbs. The next thing I did was plant the seeds. I did that in two different ways. For half of the cell tray I sowed the seeds directly into the cells. I placed two seeds in each cell to avoid ending up with what I call plantless or empty growing slots. The downside of this tactic is that often both seeds sprout and you have to thin the plants out later on, but that's still better than having lots of empty growing slots. Now for the remaining half of the cell tray, as well as for the single pots, I pre-germinated the seeds with the so-called paper towel method. I only planted them after they had sprouted. I watered the soil in the cell tray well right after direct sowing and then placed it under the grow lights. The soil was still moist enough two days later when the seeds from the paper towel method had sprouted and were ready for planting, so there was no need to water again. After two more days, I planted some of the remaining sprouted seeds from the paper towel method in larger standalone pots too. Once done, I watered the soil to roughly and then placed the pots under the grow lights too. Then I waited for the radishes to emerge from the soil. I didn't have to wait long though. The first sprouts appeared just four days after direct sowing. And the rest followed within a few days. To my surprise, the seeds I started with the paper towel method did not appear any faster than those I sowed directly. In fact, the direct sown ones came out of the ground a day earlier. Anyway, by the end of the first week, I could already thin, or remove if you prefer, all the extra plants that grew from the directly sown seeds, so that there was only one plant left in each cell. This gave the remaining radishes enough room to grow and develop properly. Everything went smoothly from then on, and all I had to do in the weeks that followed was water the plants about twice a week, keep the grow lights on for about 12 hours a day, occasionally remove the yellow leaves from the plants. And that was basically it. The plants grew relatively fast. By the fourth week, most of the bulbs in the cell tray started to take on a nice round shape. The ones in the single pots were a bit different though. They had less rounded, more elongated bulbs and noticeably bigger leaves. Then the lettuce that I was also growing indoors at the time needed transplanting into larger pots. I needed more space under the grow lights. And since the weather was favorable, there was no hard freezing, I decided to move the cell tray and about half of the pots out to my miniature greenhouse. 
From then on, I let the remaining four plants inside grow for about three and a half more weeks before I harvested them on the 21st of February. I could have harvested them earlier. They were the right size, but I wanted to see if the bulbs would continue to grow. And I was also curious how they would compare to the ones I moved outside. Now my biggest worry before I started was that my indoor growing room, which has a constant temperature of around 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit, would be too warm for radishes. I was concerned that the plants would flower too soon or that the bulbs might turn out spicy or woody. That wasn't the case though. Yes, only one of the four plants that I kept inside for the entire grow period had a nice looking bulb. The other three were a bit deformed, but they tasted just as good as those we get from the garden. As far as size goes, the indoor plants had larger bulbs than the ones I moved outside. The difference was minor when compared to those I grew in the same kind of pots, but obvious when compared to those that I grew in the cell tray. Which made me realize that the size of the growing container matters. The larger the container, the faster the radishes seem to grow and the bigger their bulbs get. I would definitely recommend using larger pots and cell trays if you have the space for it. The cell tray did well too though. The plants in it grew slower and didn't develop as big of the bulb as those in the larger pots, but they still got big enough for us to eat them. What's also interesting is that the plants I moved outside, regardless of the container, looked healthier. The bulbs had a brighter red color and the leaves were noticeably greener too. I guess that the much colder outside weather did them good. They are cool season vegetable after all. That's it. I hope you find this indoor radish growing experiment useful and if you have any questions, Please leave them in the comments.